Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are going to be continuing the module short story narrations for the various operators in Dark Knights. Today with the module short story and the module for Operator Shining. Alright, before we do anything, however, uh, let me say very quickly here at the beginning that uh, just like for the Kaltzit module short story narration that I did uh, very recently, or rather the previous video to this one, uh, this one connects, or rather will clarify, a certain uh, exchange of words, so to say, uh, that happens during the latest chapter of the main story, aka chapter 11. So if you do not want any spoilers and you're not yet there in the main story, uh, where the certain exchange between Shining and certain people will happen, or certain person will happen, I suggest not listening to the story portion of this video. Uh, timestamp is in the comment section below, pinned comment, so skip ahead if you just want to see what uh, the module does for the operator. And uh, you're clear of spoilers then. However, the story itself and what I will say at the end of the story will pretty much be spoilers for uh, a certain portion of chapter 11. Chapter, chapter 11 carried a lot of... <laughs> A lot of big reveals, if that wasn't clear with this and the previous video. Uh, but yeah, anyway, you have been warned. So, let us proceed to the story itself. Breton, our module and the short story today are titled Withered Scabbard. And before we begin, like, mostly always, I want to point out how much do I love the uh, art for this thing. And how much it screams that it came out of a Souls game, which it didn't, obviously, but my god, this thing could literally be out of any of the Souls games, I guess. However, I want to point out that uh, the text at the bottom might not be the most important in the picture, it just uh, says the title of the module, which is Withered Scabbard, continuing for enhancing operator's complete capabilities. I mean, it's a module, self-explanatory. However, at the top, obviously we have Shining's name up there, but... We do have three words. Life, death, rebirth. We will come back to those words once we are done with the story. So then, once again, the module and the short story are titled Withered Scabbard, and this is how the story goes. It was an eerily still night. All light in the mansion extinguished, only moonlight spilling through the window into the room. In the dim and the dark, a precautious daughter was led to her mother's delivery bed. Still so young, yet her strict education had already begun, and a sword and scabbard conferred upon her. The father's daughter naturally inherits the, way the ways in which he surpasses others, bloodlines ever able to record power and wisdom. So was the theory to which the confessari subscribed. The daughter watched her mother intently. The white-haired Sarka's woman shut her eyes and laid down upon her back. Her body rested in calm and grace, shadow cast upon the wall as if the very contours of love for her child. Below her, an infant silhouette was drawn out by the slanted moonlight, magnified and finally thrown upon the wall as if some sort of monster. This newborn life was yet frail and impotent, but did not impulsively wail as the normal suckling would, instead silently opening its eyes that could not yet see. Then clouds masked the moonlight, and the mother's arms slid down past the bed. Together with the light, the mother's silhouette did vanish from the wall. Now the daughter gazed at this succession of life, it was not her first time witnessing a life pass before her eyes. Her father had departed this coil not long prior. And now another demise and nescence was playing out. The vanishing and parting, the swelling and birthing of life. Every particular presented before the daughter, yet her arts... The arts of the confessari would not stir at this would not collect at her fingertips as expected. Why? The dollar was struck with confusion. Life was 
the concept her father made occasional mention of, the subtle weapon held by the confessari, and the thing she was ever urged to gain comprehension of. But her father's death was an airily gossamer in her memories, of little thickness or weight. Her mother's passing was all too abrupt, as if someone had with naked hands taken all vitality from her. Now here in this dead of night, her brother had silently arrived. Just what was life? Just what was it she was feeling? Did the lives of those that populated the household, her mother and father that possessed the same silvery hair, herself who resembled her mother so, and his newborn brother who had yet to cry, did their lives resemble each other in any way? Our lives in the end will become one with the higher form. Such did the father tell the daughter before drawing his last breath. Instinctively, she had sensed it was no majestic metaphor. Life flowed in the veins of the family of the purest bloodline and something returned to her side once again in this moment. Or perhaps it had never left. And that is our short story. This pretty much links up to uh, a certain uh, event that takes place in the main story, which uh, I'm sure if you're listening to this, I hope you are aware <laughs> and are not spoiling yourself right now, but we do get to see a scene where Shining finally steps uh, into or returns into contact with uh, her brother, essentially, uh, the head of the Confessari. And they exchange a couple of words, the whole scene being very tense as well, uh, especially from Shining's uh, perspective towards the two at the table with her. Uh, but uh, we do get the scene starting out pretty much being told as the reader that the person at the head of the table is her brother, considering she's being addressed as his sister. However, at the end of the conversation, when Shining is leaving, she addresses that very same person that uh, up until that very moment we thought is the brother with father. And here we get pretty much shown uh, why. It seems that this entire whole plan of her father's, or rather this bloodline thing that they have going on, is kind of a confessari ritual in which the father, maybe it isn't a confessari ritual, I'm just saying, but seems to be a ritual in which the father uh, passes on, but transfers his soul and whole being potentially into a yet unborn life, aka in this case, the newborn son which is Shining's brother, which yes, that entire scene then makes a lot more sense, obviously, from the main story, because the person is not just her brother, biologically speaking, yes, it is her brother, but from a soul and a mind perspective, it is her father, which is a very fucked up concept if you ask me if you ask me that 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 thinking about that is just making my brain stop <laughs> working for a moment like oh god no that is that is some next level bullshit Ugh. but at the same time it does uh feel the same way uh kind of the same way in which um well not really the same way but in a very similar serves or at serves a rather similar function to what uh, Cache was doing when he was pretty much planting uh, seeds of himself into the spirit of another person, so to speak. But in Cache's case, he could be in he, he could pretty much plant the seeds in multiple people while this guy is just uh, he is linked to just a single person. hmm. Interesting. I do wonder if the two, uh, if the two rituals that these two are uh, using to prolong their lives, in a sense, are from the same origin kind of thing. But one might be a diluted version, one might be an expanded version. I don't know. Anyway, 
very interesting gives us pretty much uh like i said uh more context to what was happening during the <laughs> entire conversation uh in that particular scene in the main story and uh i'm happy that this this exists however it's time to check out what the module does for the operator so let's go and take a look All right, and now for what the module does. So, first off, as always, let's go over the traits and talents uh, on default, and then we're gonna see what the module upgrades. And, uh, my god, prior to this video, it's been a while since I've looked at the traits and talents for uh, Shining, and I completely forgot how bare bones this is. Uh, uh, quick side note, uh, Shining was the first one of the first six stars that I ever got in the game, way back when uh, the game released. And to this day, I still utilize her. If anybody ever tells you that she is not meta anymore, uh, you slap them across the face with the backhand and tell them, shut up. <laughs> but yeah, jokes aside, uh, to this day, super useful character. Uh, and uh, she will carry you probably for a lot of things. Anyway. When it comes to her trait, we have Restore the HP of all allies. When it comes to uh, her first talent, the Black Fiend's Protection, Defense of all allies within range plus 60. And her second talent, Code of Law, gives her a attack speed up of plus 10. And that is pretty much it. Really old, really old 6 star, very bare bones on talents. Uh, when it comes to the descriptions, it guess makes sense, it's one of the earliest characters, so... Uh, <laughs> Some will have very basic descriptions. But, what do we get out of the module? So, as always, we get uh, flat stats up. In this case, we get attack. And we get an attack speed up, which is kind of very nice. The attack speed, by the way, is a plus 5, as you can see right here. Which obviously goes up with uh, upgrades. But, the trait gets upgraded and she gains also now a healing increase by 15% when healing a ground unit. And yes, this focuses only on ground units, but if you want to make a tank uh, a bit more survivable, that's pretty neat. However, what do we get out of the upgrade path? So, on stage 2, the first talent, Black Fiend's Protection, will get a buff. It will go from uh, defense of all allies within range plus 60 to defense of all allies within range to uh, plus 80 and ground units gain another 30. So on a ground unit you will have 110 defense extra on. Uh, this gets further buffed on stage 3. On stage 3 the overall uh, defense buff will be 100 and the ground unit extra will be 40. So you gain, on a ground unit, plus 140 defense, flat. And that's about it. Uh, the attack speed, by the way, goes up to a plus 7 on max. So it makes her a tiny bit faster, which is uh, pretty neat considering she's a healer, obviously. So healing goes up a tiny bit faster. However, uh, she will, obviously, considering she's a 6-star, gain a second module in the future. And quite honestly, that module might be your better choice if you want to keep your uh, materials to unlock something for shining. The module that will come in the future will be buffing the Code of Law skill, uh, pardon, talent, uh, and it will be twofold. First off, the attack speed, doesn't matter if it's gonna be a tier 2 or 3 module, will be plus 15, so you gain an extra 5 uh, attack speed uh, on top of what she already has. Uh, flat stats will be attack and defense, but the module will uh, be operat operating depending on which of the two skills, skill 2 or skill 3, you have equipped. If you have her second skill equipped, she will have a uh, increased attack by either 15 or 25% by default. But if you have skill 3 equipped, she will have a SP recovery rate up. Uh, on tier 2, it's a uh, 0.45 per second. On tier 3, it's a 0.6 per second. So, once again, if you want want to wait for module 2 for Shining, probably the better, uh, better uh, recommendation here for her, considering it will be two-folded, and you can pretty much utilize both of her skills uh, 
while not having to think about, oh, do I have to equip or de-equip the module? However, the first module that we have right now might be a tiny bit of a niche thing that might work in certain situations probably better, considering it gives a overall defense uh, buff of either an 80 or 100 uh, when on st stage 2 or 3. So, might help, might not help, it depends. Like many, many things in this game, it is a thing of uh, situation. But, yeah, that is about it. So, once again, thank you very much for listening. If you've liked this video, please consider leaving a like, it helps me a lot. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. There's a lot more of these story narrations on the channel if you just want to listen to anything, uh, be it from the modules that you are gonna see on the screen for a playlist in a second, or uh, the, the vast majority at this point of uh, main, both main story and side stories. So, pick your poison. But anyway, thank you all for listening. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.